thanks very much to our sponsors. Um, obviously, you know, the, the sponsors are very important for these events. And if you um, fill, out, fill out your your survey at the end of this and um, the, the code for my my session will be in the in the chat on my last slide. Uh, you have the chance to win a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. So thank you very much. Very, very generous from from our sponsors. Um, so, yes, my name is Scott Juro, um, and I've been a uh, business applications MVP since 2013. Um, had the privilege of seeing it growing up, you know. So, you know, back in the day, Microsoft CRM, um, and then Dynamics CRM, and then, and, you know, all the way through to what we have now with the Power Platform. And, you know, much of the Power Platform we see today has, has roots in those in those humble roots right back in the day with with uh, Dynamics and Microsoft CRM. So I feel really privileged to be part of that journey. Um, one of my uh, one of the hashtag that I'm uh, quite big um, on promoting is uh, pro code, no code unite. And so because I'm a developer at heart, right? So I've always been a developer, you know, I've worked in in uh, ASP.NET and, and before that sort of um, C++ and, you know, so uh, but I love the fact that the platform is moving to this in this no code, low code way. And, you know, it, it's an evolution of, of the whole software development uh, industry. And, and I love that we, we we're we seeing in our, our our generation some of these really significant moves. So if you've not already followed me on uh, Twitter and, and to subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, that'd be great. So um, I'm joining you live from Vancouver uh, in Canada. So um, I live here now. Um, I've moved over from the UK. So let me know in the chat where you're where you're joining from, just so I've kind of got a bit of an idea. We were chatting before the session where, you know, it's trying to know where people are coming from and um, getting a bit of a, a, an understanding of um, what people things that people are interested in um, is part of doing these things face to face. So virtual sessions, sometimes you lose a bit of that. So yeah, I'd love to hear a bit of, um, you know, chat in the uh, little bit of banter in the chat. Um, I am going to be talking about enhancing model driven apps using custom pages and BCF code components. Um, so really, really excited to talk to you about that. It personally, it's a, one of the big, big focuses that I have in my professional career, um, looking at model driven apps and, you know, and how we can push them to the next, uh, next level. If I could ask just a bit of a housekeeping, if we could just keep the questions to the to the end. Um, and if you do want to put a question in the chat, you know, halfway through um, and to, to make sure that we maybe pick it up at the end, if you could just prefix it with a Q, you know, Q so that we can, you know, can see that it's a question that we need to come back to. So that would be fantastic. So let's do this. Um, so model driven apps and canvas apps. Um, as I said, I've been part of that journey from dynamic CRM all the way to where we are in the power platform. And model driven apps really are what we had when we were using. So, you know, this is the dynamics track. Um, so I'm assuming that most people here have um, have been, you know, part part of the dynamics journey. Um, so I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing people from that. So Phil is stalking me from the UK and people from Amsterdam and Paris and uh, Tunisia, Quebec. I, I was, loads of loads of great things I'm sorry I'm going to get distracted by the chat I promise not to do it but um but yeah so model driven apps is really what we have today um that's the the latest incarnation of what we used to have which was just an app in dynamics and then in parallel to that canvas apps obviously have been um gathering momentum in the low code world and I mean, I'm not going to go into the differences between the two because I'm sure you've probably been very aware of the, the the evolution. And and sometimes it's like, you know, well, which do you pre prefer? So, you know, um, you can't say it depends. So, you know, just put in the chat, you know, which do you prefer? You know, maybe, maybe a little bit of justification. You know, if you had to choose, I mean, what, which one would you choose uh, and why? Because, you know, model driven apps, if you've ever tried to build a canvas app to look like a model driven app, um, and I've done it. I did it right back at the beginning when Canvas App was sort of first coming out. It's really hard. You think initially it's like, oh, no problem, I can do that. Um, it's just a few few fields and a few bits of navigation, and it's just, you start doing it, and then you're like, oh, and this is security, and then you've got like responsivity, and you've got all of these things that you get metadata driven with model driven apps. Um, it, it's it's really quite complicated because on the other hand, the Canvas app allows you to do these things that, you know, you really have got full control over what you're doing. Um, and so you can make very bespoke user interfaces. Um, 
so yeah, so some people are saying depends in different ways. So Mohammed's saying a model driven app that has an embedded canvas app. Very sneaky, Mohammed. Yeah, very, very good. Um, uh, love starting from the data model with model driven apps. Absolutely. I mean, that's that is that's metadata driven. That's the power of model driven. I mean, obviously with canvas apps, we've got templates as well. So, you know, we're starting to see that ability in canvas apps. You can start from the data model and, and build your canvas app from that as well. Um, yes, but but yeah, at, you know, no, it's no surprise that a lot of people are saying that they prefer if they had to hang their hat on it, you know, model driven apps uh, is something that they they would uh, go with considering this is the dynamics track there's no surprise there but um the thing is okay so it does depend right yeah i said i know i said it <laughs> you can't say it depends but it does kind of depend and so actually you know talking about what we're talking about here really it is about convergence um sorry man my dog's gonna bark um so yeah, so um, this is the, the beauty of live events um, from from your home office. So yeah, we, what we're talking about here is is uh, talking about convergence, okay? Because and and that's not this kind of convergence. Um, I've been helping the kids with maths, and it's all been brought in, bringing back all sorts of uh, memories of doing this kind of stuff. Um, and it, it's about bringing the two technologies together um, and actually in, interestingly you know if you look at the Merriam-Webster definition of convergence um, they're talking about one of the definitions is actually the convergence of technologies and so convergence has been around in technology for a long time you know if you remember back in the day with voice over IP VoIP stuff you know it was um, very much about converging VoIP with the sort of standard uh, the you know the, the the analog exchanges and things like that so um, if we were uh, given the ability to have all of that good stuff from Canvas inside model-driven apps, we wouldn't have to decide on which to choose. And so um, Clay Wiesner, uh, love Clay, he's a great guy. And, and he first started talking about convergence of apps um, at, uh, it was actually Atlanta, the, the, the Biz Apps Application Summit, and that's in 2019. And he actually introduced the idea of custom pages and ca custom pages effectively being these canvas apps inside model driven apps. And then fast forward a little bit until May 2021, uh, Ryan Cunningham, who's uh, director of Power Apps uh, with Microsoft, he then also was saying, right, OK, now this is getting real, guys. We're actually bringing in this modern app designer and we've got custom pages in this modern app designer. So really started to get exciting. And then we had this public preview. Um, Adrian Orth announced uh, in July in, in 2021. So suddenly we have this ability to add these canvas app kind of things called custom pages into model driven apps so you know so what what are those but before i get onto that the big thing is is that they are now ga and you know the ga of canvas pages um it, it custom pages in model driven apps kind of sort of snuck under the radar a bit i didn't think there was a big enough fanfare um but it's it's now actually available to use in production and perhaps some some people um, haven't actually been aware of that. But the thing is, is that before we had the ability to do this, we were always pushing model driven boundaries. Um, if you've been building apps in model driven apps uh, for a long time, you know, maybe doing it in back in the day with dynamics, um, you'll be familiar with that experience of saying right well this is fantastic because i've got all this metadata driven stuff metadata driven forms metadata driven views and dashboards but wouldn't it be great if we could just add a little button here you know small thing to ask right um, or wouldn't it be great if actually i want all that metadata driven stuff there but actually, I want some um, custom logic on that view. So I want to pop up, pop up something and do some uh, some um, very, very bespoke user interface that's matching a very single use um, use case. And it doesn't seem like an unreasonable ask from users, but you, you then you have to say to, to your customers, you have to say, well, well, you can do it through JavaScript and TypeScript, HTML, web resources and PCF, or you can do it on server side using some, you know, calculated columns and plugins and flows and workflow. But the problem is, is that what happens is that you, you then you, you, you start to introduce this sort of um, total cost of ownership starts to go up very high. 
it, you know, very quickly it can become quite a maintenance overhead um, because you're no longer in this metadata driven world and this building stuff out for using forms and from the data model. You're in this this world of custom UI development and you start to need all these kind of very different skill sets. And so by pushing the boundaries, you start to push the overall cost up. And so that's why I was so excited about custom pages because you know we want the best of the both worlds and when do we want it you know I'm I'm assuming everyone is shouting now right um and we're not going to all come off mute and, and shout about it but the the thing is, is that in parallel to all of this uh Greg Lindhorst at Microsoft who's a principal PM um he's an architect on the Power Apps team he's been spearheading this Power FX initiative and I'd like to think that uh, there was some kind of secret meeting going on somewhere in Microsoft when during Canvas apps, when they were um, building, um, you know, all of the, the the app magic beaters and previews that came out. And then when Power Apps was first introduced with um, all this Excel like formulas, I would like to think that there was a, some kind of plan to say, you know what, what would be great is to have this Excel like formula language, this low code formula language that really could just be everywhere in all of the Power Platform, you know, and that's model driven apps in 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 Power Automate everywhere. Um, I think it's a little bit more serendipitous than that. Um, but the language has now been called PowerFX and it's actually open source. So you, you can actually, if you wanted to build it into so your own products, if, if you didn't need to go down that route, but it's gradually being adopted everywhere um, more and more. And, and so that's exactly what custom pages are doing there. They're using this PowerFX, but it's not just custom pages. We're starting to see it in places like, um, we're starting to see it in com the commanding, the V2 commanding, so command bars, um, we're starting to see it in calculated columns inside Dataverse. Uh, so we start, we're seeing power effects really um, being prevalent in the whole in the across the whole board. Now, why is it why is it actually great? Um, I mean, the, it's it's countering that issue I was just talking about with total cost of ownership because rather than having um, plugins written in C sharp and HTML logic written in TypeScript. Um, which is very much a, a complicated um, high total cost of ownership, we're seeing much simpler expressions created in this PowerFX language, um, which is going to have a lower lower total cost of ownership. But why is it lower? lower? Well, it's because it's declarative, and this is the key. Um, we're describing what to do, not how to do it, because C Sharp and TypeScript, you say, I want to do it in a particular way. I, I need to go and retrieve some data, I'm going to cache it, etc. Well, whereas with PowerFX, you, you are making much simpler ex, uh, expressions that describe the intent of what your application does, and then the, it's down to the application to decide on how to actually going to do that. Now, uh, an example of that. Um, is is this uh, the engine an analogy? Now I, I know nothing about engines and cars. I, I just need to full disclosure. I know nothing about. I know about uh, there's something called a carbur carburetor and there's something called a you know an air filter and stuff. But if we're going to use this anal analogy, imperative programming, which is effectively what C sharp and uh, TypeScript is, is is like if you're asking a friend over and then um, telling them how to fix your car. So you're saying pick up that spanner and then undo that nut and then replace that part. So if something goes wrong, basically you're you're at fault, right? Um, whereas declarative programming is just asking your friend over and, and saying, can you fix your car, my car, and they go and fix it. It's up to them how to fix it. You just want them. You're just instructing them to do it. Now, obviously, everyone needs a friend like that. Um, but the point is, is that when we have that declarative way of programming, the lower the cost of ownership goes down because we don't have to worry about all these complicated things like caching and like performance optimizations and about how to minimize the number of events and how to make sure that the 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 um, the, the controls on the form are fully accessible and they're responsive and they work offline in off on on your on mobile apps and all of these kind of things. So. Declarative programming it reduces the total cost of ownership because it you don't you have to worry about a lot of, of the less of these issues. But 
it's a journey. I mean, I don't think necessarily we're all weeks we're going to get completely declarative. I think there's always going to be some things that we need to worry about. You know, we have to have a, a mind around performance, a mind for accessibility, a mind around, you know, what which platform we want to target, offline access and things like that. But certainly compared to using the imperative way of programming, it's it's going to be a lot, a lot quicker. So the when we've got these model driven apps and canvas apps, the idea is that that PowerFX forms the glue between all of those things. So, you, you know, we've got commanding business rules, calculate columns, forms, and PowerFX then really allows us to link across into all of that canvas goodness, all of the, the, the um, you know, custom UI using that PowerFX language. So, um, types of custom pages then, um, bringing, making it a little bit real. Um, so here's like a, a model driven app, you know, so you'll be very familiar with this, this uh, structure you've got here. You know, you've got the left hand navigation and you've got your, your office bar across the top. Um, so a custom page can sit squarely right there in the main content. And that's kind of probably the, the um, you know, the, the simplest form of a custom page. Um, what you can also do with a custom page is you can actually make it pop up in a dialogue. So you can kind of got a cross uh, to close button, but you've also got like an expand out to full page uh, to fill out the whole window if you wanted to. Now, that's great for a command bar kind of scenario. Maybe you want to have a custom close opportunity button or something like that. Um, and then you can also have a, a custom bar, a custom page that, that's in a side panel. Um, so it's sort of more like slides in on the right, and but the same kind of thing. You've got a closed button and a full page expansion. So the dialogue and the sidebar, very similar. Just they, there's a, there's a sort of like a hint to to the user that that's a slightly different um, different kind of interaction. Um, or you've also got this uh, side panel, which is the side panels are quite new, which is more of a sort of like a static um, a tab on the right hand side, which you can add custom pages into as well. So, um, so custom pages can actually sit in in pretty much all of the places that you'd expect inside that model-driven scaffold framework. So let's have a look at um, an example of a Microsoft first-party app um, and how they extend it, because um, how they extend that model-driven user interface. Because remember, I was saying how you know um, we're always pushing the boundaries of model driven apps well you know guess what the first party apps uh they're also trying to push the boundaries of model driven apps because the first party apps now are actually in a team on their own inside microsoft um the dynamics 365 for sales team and marketing team and you know customer service team those are those are teams that that are um just using the features that model driven apps and custom pages give them you know there's, there's a there's a platform team that build all this infrastructure this application infrastructure and then that application infrastructure is consumed by the first party apps um usually before we get to use it right you know that's the thing is you know if you want to see the kind of features that are coming down the road look at the first party apps and see what they can do there and that's always usually a you a kind of a little bit of a an insight into the kind of things that we're going to see because really to level the play of playing field we should be able to extend model driven apps just in the same way as the first party uh, teams extend, extend model driven apps. There really shouldn't be any app infrastructure that's exposed only available to first party apps. Everything that's in the model driven app application infrastructure should be available to everyone in a, in a democratic world, right? Um, you know, sometimes it's not quite there, you know, there's limited budget, limited time, you know, all of those kind of things. Um, but Nevertheless, uh, by that that wanting to expand um, out uh, the the functionality is is a common scenario. You know, it's it's like okay, we've got a, so this is a model driven app. Okay, so this is the sales hub, um, and you know, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so you can see uh, we've got you know this up next section of the top it leads scoring who knows who. So we're starting to see a lot of these kind of little components. Uh, popping up inside the first party apps, um, obviously in amongst um, all the other stuff, the standard stuff that we would we know and love, uh, just metadata driven things. Um, but, you know, all of these little additional kind of widgets. Um, now, the, these widgets are all these are all code components. So these are PCF code components. Um, and, and if you've not looked at PCF code components, they're basically bits of custom code written in TypeScript. 
Alt and compiled into JavaScript uh, and output HTML, often written in, in uh, the React language. And, and what you can do is you can then interact with, you can bind that to data on the, on the field, uh, on the form, um, or you can bind the data in views. And so, so these aren't at the moment, um, this, this is not uh, a custom, these are not uh, custom page components. Because if you remember, uh, the only place you can use custom pages is, uh, you know, in the in the full uh, screen, side panels, dialogues, places like that. You can't use uh, a custom page inside a form. Obviously, we've got the ability to embed a Canvas app still. Okay, you know, that, that's been around for a very long time. And maybe you've used that already. So, um, but, you know, there's some challenges with that still. It's because it's it's like an iframe. It's, it's not, it has a different security um, session. You know, there's some some limitations around it. Um, so the these um, the, the first party apps use sometimes use embedded Canvas apps. So for example, the business card scanner is an embedded uh, Canvas app. But these are um, code components and and they they're quite slick. But if you've seen the deal manager um, as well, deal manager again. So this is uh, a left hand navigation. So you can kind of see this kind of looks like it might be a custom page because it's it's filling out the entire screen um but if we, if we look at the if we look at the uh the, the navigation bar here um okay so page type control okay that's a what the first party apps are doing here is they are using uh a custom pcf control to to fill this so you know that was a bit disappointed because you know that basically means it's not customizable now ultimately in the future i would hope that this area here will be a custom page and we can that may maybe opens up the opportunity for us to reuse components in it or even customize it so but i thought hey wouldn't it be a great idea to try and recreate this using a custom page to see how far we can get it so uh, so exactly what i did so if i go over into a uh the custom pages um app here and um so if i go and look at so here's just a, another standard model driven apps but what i've got here in the left hand side is a custom page in the navigation so if you look at the if you look at the um, nav bar here you can see here rather than control it says cust page type custom so you can see here it's kind of looking quite similar so i've got you know similar ability i can i can change my opportunity can change the views um uh, up here and um so i've got all, all opportunities here and i've got like i can i can do the same thing i can change um you know to, to view different parts of it combo um it's responsive as well so if i zoom in um you know and i uh i select one of these items here you can kind of see it's it's um it's bringing out the item in the right hand side and i can i can change the um the 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 rating here and you can see it uh, it will change changes the color in the graph so so this is all part of the custom page um and um what i can also do is uh i can I, if, I, if i scroll back out and just to go down here I, i've also got the ability to kind of do things like uh filter here so if i put you know calf um you can see here it's filtering the the items here and like this not one here is five cafe 100 so if i look down here if i kick five cafe uh, a 100 um i can then sort of edit this um so if i put that change that to be 100 um and so you, you'll see it, it moving up and down so we, what we're seeing here is like the you know a kind of a quite a um interactive experience and so you can get quite far i mean also i've got things like filters so i actually only want to see the stuff um you know in in february i can apply that and it's showing my filters um and you know i can i can sort um using the the sort items here and select items but also i can do here is i can open up a uh, a record so not only have i got a custom page just showing the custom page what i've also got the ability to do is i actually seamlessly show a standard model driven form as part you know linked from a custom page itself um and so if I, you know what I can do there is I can click back and it will take me back to the previous uh, custom page. So the custom page is, is being quite, you know, integrated inside uh, the model driven apps. And so the, as far as the user is concerned, you know, they might not actually think that this custom page really is anything other than just a model driven app. Um, 
but notice that he didn't remember my state. So there was the, the, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to sort of talk about some of the limitations of the, some of the things that you try to get, you might try to do that you, you may come up against. So and one of those things is that when I navigated back to my custom page, I couldn't preserve the state. Um, but if I go open up this, this opportunity here, We've seen a custom page inside the sitemap, which is the, the opportunity dashboard here. Um, but, you know, what also thought is like, hey, we've also got the ability to show it in like dialogue. So I thought, OK, let's create a dialogue. And um, so you can sort of create like a custom um, dialogue way of, um, uh, you know, for a winning opportunity. And, you know, that means you could create some sort of, you know, in this particular case here, it's doing some currency calculations. And so you can see I can expand that out um to full screen um you know and, and and cancel it um so this is this is basically linked from a command bar um now at the moment the 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 power effects commanding that that's that's um, just been introduced doesn't allow you to open up a custom page using the navigate button from power effects sorry the navigate function um but as i understand it that's going to be coming very very soon so soon you will be able to use the navigate uh function so at the moment this is actually using a bit of javascript to open up this and in fact it's actually using the ribbon workbench smart button um, and i've got a blog post on how to do this so uh, it will be at the links at the end if you want to um uh if you want to do that um so so yeah you you can see that that, that there's um you know quite quite a rich uh set of functionality so i managed to get quite far there um so let's have a look at what this looks like um so if we go into our this is a solution here and um, I go to my apps when I when I open up my model driven app um, if I open it up in the preview if you just edit normally you don't get a, this functionality you have to edit it in the preview app designer um, what you get is the ability to go and then add a page um, and so uh, table based dashboard. So those those are your standard model driven uh, view or dashboards. Um, but you've got this ability to add in a custom uh, page. Now, interestingly, it still says preview, but um, that's just preview because it's the preview app designer. It's the whole of custom pages is GA. Um, and yes, yeah, so you can create and you can say use an existing one or and then uh, show it in the in the navigation because you can notice that I've got some custom pages added that are not in the navigation they're just used for the the dialogues like the, the win opportunity so it's very important that if you're going to use your custom page inside your model driven app you have to add it even if it's not in the navigation otherwise you just you won't be able to um to navigate so once you've actually added it into um the the, the navigation um what you can then do is you can then sort of you can select it and and you, you the, the lovely thing about this model driven app uh, modern app designer of course is that it's WYSIWYG you know you you get a nice view of it and you can sort of say okay well what's it going to look like in the different um in the on the different form factors and so you can kind of you can see here the um the app being kind of nice and responsive and uh, you know showing you how how you might interact with it in different um, different circumstances. So um, if I edit this, um, so if we go back to my pages and I go uh, opportunity dashboard and I edit and I open this up, what you'll quickly see is that it kind of looks very similar to uh, to an, a Canvas app. OK, um, and you know, you, you might initially think, oh, well, I, I know Canvas apps. Um, that's fine. Uh, so it's 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 just a matter of just uh, taking my Canvas app and then um, it, loading it in as a custom page. Um, this is this is a warning here you'll get when you edit it in the only when you edit it in the in the designer here, just because it's using some code components. And I'm going to go into that in a minute. Um, but so, yeah, you might think, oh, well, but at the moment there is no way of taking a canvas app and then sort of converting it to a custom page. The only way to do that at the moment, um, and you might think this is crazy, is copy and paste across from a canvas app into a custom page. But I would highly recommend against that, having tried that just simply because you might think that this looks very similar to you know and you think well, this is just the, the cast this is just the canvas app designer but actually there's 
some quite significant differences, you know, in terms of what's going on um, in, in this designer. So firstly, obviously, it looks subtly different. Um, but if I go to the add button uh, here, you'll see that there's actually a very, very small sub subset of um, commands, uh, uh, controls. Um, it's it's basically the fluent UI uh, controls. So um, what I thought I'd do is I'd just kind of go through, um, you know, the the kind of problems I found in doing this. And and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I just saw in the chat, I went through that painful chat, uh, painful task of converting across. Yes, th there is some challenges, right, as, as it is at the moment, because it's not a like for like. Um, there are differences between Canvas apps and custom pages. It's not just simply, uh, oh, ca Canvas apps inside model-driven apps. They, they are a bit of a different beast. Um, and the first thing you might notice is actually there's only a single, you can only have a single page. You know, there's not just inside a, a model driven app, uh, inside a custom page, you've only got the ability natively by default to have a single screen. Unlike a canvas app, obviously you can have multiple, uh, multiple screens. Um, in settings, you can go and enable multiple screens, but it's kind of the recommendation for performance reasons and things like that is to keep it a single screen. Um, because then it, it lowers that um, that the overhead when you load it up, um, because you know you're, you're navigating around inside a model driven app, it, and it, in a, in, a, in a, a Canvas app, obviously your navigation is all being handled by your your actual app, your Canvas app. Whereas in a model driven app, your navigation is handled by your navigation in the left hand pane usually. Um, so that's why it's off by default. Um, so the limited controls. Um, so they're using these new, these, these fluent controls uh, that, that first we saw in the data, in Dataverse for Teams, but there's some really quite marked differences. Um, so for example, before you, you could create like your tab order um, by setting a tab index, but in model-driven apps, all the tab order is all set to zero. So all the controls it uses, like it, it basically uses the, the, um, the tab order is using a DOM ordering. So it actually renders it quite differently to make it much more accessible in that way, which means that actually it's a lot easier with your code components when you create PCF controls um, to to make make it fully accessible, which is not the case if you've ever tried to do that inside Canvas apps. Um, and also this the Fluent UI controls are actually quite different to the classic controls. They they raise different events, like they, the on change event is 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 raised with every key press. There's less styling options. There's no default property. You have this sort of single text bound property, which um, when you call reset, it resets it to the previous value that was set by an expression. Um, in the combo boxes work kind of different. So yeah, they, they do, you have to be aware of of, uh, of how kind of different they are. Now you can enable classic controls um, in their classic in brackets legacy. Um, but of course, if as soon as you do that, you lose that styling. Because if you remember, um, if we just preview our, preview our app here and you select one of these things, you can see that the, the actual styling of the controls looks very similar already to model-driven apps. So you can get actually a long way with all of the, the, the kind of the basic uh, controls that you get added, so edit the, the text box, the uh, icons and, and date pickers and buttons, you know, and the buttons are again, very styled the same as you might expect in a model-driven apps. But quite quickly, you're going to come up against some sort of other challenges. Like, how do we make it? Um, how do we um, make it look like a, a Canvas app? Sorry, like a model-driven app um, for things like grids and the command bars and stuff like that. And you might think, oh well, we can kind of go and create a Canvas component for that. Um, well, currently, you can't add a, ca a, a Canvas component. So if I was to go into my uh, my app here. Um, uh, I, you, there is no Canvas component ability to go and add. You know, you, the only way you can do it is import a Canvas uh, library, a component library um, for, to get Canvas uh, components. And that's actually in preview at the moment. So, you know, it, it, it's used with kid gloves at, at the moment. Um, and so you might think, OK, well, if I want to do like a command bar, um, so if we if we uh, preview this, so, you know, for example, I've got a drop down here with with and I've got the ability to <clears throat> have lots of different um, things like, you know, I can I can turn my filters on 
and it will change the icon. Uh, so I'll apply that, you know, filters and it shows. So you might think, oh, well, we can do that just using some some buttons and, and things like that. Well, yeah, you probably can. Um, you certainly it's slightly more tricky to have this sort of drop down uh, layering, you know, you might be able to do it. This demit, this the dismiss where you click out is going to be a little bit harder. Um, you you might think, okay, well, for this grid here, if we just show the grid, um, you know, you can think, okay, well, that's a gallery, and you know, I could probably do that. Well, the problem is, is when you start to go down that route, um, it, it starts to get very complex very quickly. So accessibility is very challenging with tab stops and arrow key navigation. Sometimes it's just completely not possible to get that kind of accessibility that people expect. Performance app checker starts to go wild and shouts at you. So, you know, you got more than 300 controls because if you're going to do that kind of creating these these those components using primitive stuff like rectangles and, and labels and buttons, um, it you have lots and lots of layering and it can get very complex quite quickly especially if you've got uh, galleries with lots of records and you know you only have to have sort of five or six columns and in each of those columns you might have some labels and you might have some rectangles for, for, for highlighting again it multiplies up those controls very quickly and so maintenance becomes very very hard you know and so actually what you start to find is actually your total cost of ownership starts to go down again so it's like ah well okay we're using power effects and we're using canvas apps to lower total cost cost of ownership but this is just making it harder to maintain well that's really where um code components comes in so if you look in the right hand side here we've got code components um so what i've got here is i've got fluent grid command bar and power apps chart so these are code components that that I'm using inside and and these these are uh, I, I'm, I've built for for the purposes of my my own apps um, and uh, you know what these mean is that if we take the um, this grid here this is just a single component and what we do is we bind it to some items so it, you can see here it's just sorting by it's it's this is listing the a collection of, of opportunities and it's it's sorting by um, a particular flag and um, and a column that's set by when you when you click on each of the different headers, it, the the control raises an event so you can go and pick on it. Um, and so, and also like this, the command bar again, it's it's another, it's a, a custom um, a custom control that that's got a, a set of um, you know a, a table which gives us all the icons uh that we pass in and all the different text and stuff and we can make some of this dynamic right so we can make it um only visible so on based on certain conditions and things like that so you know suddenly what it means is we've got reusable components and again remember what i was saying about power effects being the glue you have to think about it as the glue right it's not power effects is not like the silver bullet it's not like it's not this thing and if you want to quote me on that, that that's uh, that's fine but you know it's not this thing that they say oh well it's low code we'll do everything with power effects it's about using uh it as to, to glue model driven apps with these code components getting the and using declarative programming um, to go and handle all the difficult stuff like getting the data for you and caching it and managing updates to it and, and and consistency and all that kind of stuff and then where you where it really pushes at the boundaries of of power effects and canvas apps um, and starts to to increase as total cost of ownerships that's where you can move into code components so um you know this is this is an example you know on the top here i've got just a simple data table it's like a code component and you can see how quick it is whereas i move down to the bottom here this is a gallery you can see how you very quickly start to to sort of reduce this is using primitives just to you know labels inside a, a, um, a grid you can start to see how actually it's quite clunky um compared to the speed of of the the, the code components at the top um so uh so moving on then so navigation um navigation is 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 beautiful actually in in power effects because um you've got this simple navigate command when you can pass in the name of a custom page or you can pass in the name of a a, a reference to a record so if we look at this little button across the top here the uh, this uh item um to to open up a a, a new uh, open up the record that's in the right hand panel here you can see here we're using uh a nav the navigate and we're just looking up the opportunities 
um, where the selected opportunity ID matches the the opportunity ID. And so you just pass it and it will just simply open it up in, inside model driven apps, you know, transparently to the exactly the same as if someone clicked on a, a model driven row in, in a view and things like that. Equally, I could pass in the name of another cost, uh, custom page and that would do the same. Um, so um, and then re returning to the previous screen again back. So so if you look at the the, the command bar at the, cross, at the top here, you know, on on back, it's just simply saying if my 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 selected button is back, um, then just call the back and it will it will move to the um, the previous page, whatever that may be. You don't have to worry about um, the previous uh, history that will be handled by the model driven app. You can't show at the moment, like I said, navigate to a custom page inside a um, inside a dialogue or, or side panel. But, you know, as I understand it, that's coming, which is great. Another challenge is you can't move. You can't pass parameters at the moment. So um, I would love the ability to be able to open up another custom page and pass some parameters to it. You know, that would that would be make it um, a lot easier or preserve the state between when you're navigating. Um, those those two things are um, a challenge. You know, you you could obviously save some things onto the server, but um, starts would starts to get a bit bit awkward. So size does matter. This is the other the other consideration. This isn't, and this is really quite really quite uh, a, um, an important one. So uh, one of the things about model driven apps is they're incredibly good at dealing with large amounts of data. You know, you've got if you've got a model driven uh, view, you can have literally hundreds of thousands of records and you can filter them and you can uh, you can pay, paginate them and you can do all of those kind of things. And you can show um, obviously you can show visualizations and using charts and dashboards on, on aggregates of lots of large amounts of records. As soon as you start to get into a custom page, you have to be careful because not only there being delegation, if you've done any Canvas app work, then you'll be familiar with delegation. So I'm not going to go into delegation so much, but it's really PowerFX is, is optimized for handling smaller data sets. Um, uh, so a classic scenario is where you're where you're going to be uh, loading up a set of opportunities and then performing a set of, you know, like visualizing them in a graph and um, where you need to provide some sort of um, aggregation, which is actually exactly what's going on here. So if I go to my uh, my combo here, you can see at the top we've got like pipeline value, number of deals, all those kind of things. So um, what that's doing is it's loading up all the data into this this uh, this view here and then it's aggregating. And now, of course, that's doing that in in the actual app itself. It's no, there's not, it's not offloading that stuff onto the server. Um, equally, you know, inside the chart here, it's it's showing the data that's um that's that's loaded into a collection from from the the opportunity uh, data co connection. And so, whenever you're going to use custom pages, my my recommendation at the moment is to really just think about it in terms of a a point solution, you know, like acting on a, on a subset of data rather than it being a replacement. For model driven apps because if you want to if you want to do something like um you know if you want to just you know browse a load of records well that's exactly what uh model driven apps are, are for you know and and so you know you might say okay well one of these records or a group of these records i need to do some operations on so that's where i'll go over into a custom page so so avoid thinking about custom pages as uh as something that you can do everything in model driven apps in, and think about it more like you might think about a canvas app where you where you are uh, performing a particular operation um, so the uh there is in the in custom components in the in the actual uh, code components there is some ability to do much larger pagination um and so if i wanted to have this grid here um if I wanted to have this grid here bound directly to my opportunities, the code component itself, without using PowerFX, could actually manage that. So it could actually page through large amounts of records and filter large amount of records and sort large records. Um, so it's it's doing it internally. It wouldn't be receiving a data collection from the PowerFX. Power it would just be saying receiving the the connection to 
uh, opportunities in this case, you know, and and um, through the, the the Dataverse connector, and then it would do everything internally, retrieving the data. But as soon as you want to do anything outside of that code component, then that's when you have to start thinking about uh, about size. So um, next one up, um, so well, actually uh, a point just wanted to make there um, about performance monitoring. Of course, you know, it, once you're doing anything that you've you operating on a, on a, an amount of data. My my recommendation is always right from the start, try and understand what sizing of the data is. Try and get an estimate of how many records you're going to be dealing with, and actually create some custom data, um, some sample de demo data in your environment, so you can actually use the the monitoring because performance monitoring is available for custom pages, and you can actually see how long each operation is taking. Um, how many records are being retrieved, if there's any delegation, as you can see here, we've got a performance um, warning. And so it gives you lots of rich, rich data and that you can then start to kind of look into further. So I really, really highly recommend it. It's so easy just to kind of think about when you're designing your, your custom pages to use a few records right from the beginning, get get a set of records that's much more indicative of, of what you're actually going to be dealing with in your in your production. So theming, this is the, probably the hardest one um, for me. This is this is a, a very much a work in progress. Um, now, the, if we go into the Fluent UI, um, the, there is actually a, a, a theme designer. Um, and so you, you'll be very, this will look quite similar to the model driven uh, theme because the, the Fluent UI theme is quite, um, is quite close to the default Fluent theme, but you can obviously, you can change the, you know change the theme and it, it kind of gives you some accessibility warnings and so this this kind of um this theme design is, is very important especially if you're going to start using fluent controls inside your code components <clears throat> but there's no there's currently no easy way of of actually getting the the theme from your model driven app and then passing that into into your custom page because obviously you've got a certain degree of theme abilities in your in your um, model driven app. There is in the uh, in the current release notes, we've got a planned um, October 2021 um, was was the uh, the original, um, but uh, it it's still still in flight. So it's it's a it's a difficult one to do. Now the way that I do this is that inside my my app, um, <clears throat> if I close this on the in the app on start what i do is i just take the fluent ui theme and um sort of put it into a, a variable here so i can just use all the different variables here um now obviously if you've got multiple you want to support multiple themes you could just sort of switch out the theme and then use it on <clears throat> on the different style um components I'm just gonna have a drink So so yeah so what you, what you dogs dogs going to bark now so um what we can do is we can actually have um a, a, a an approximation of the theme it's it's not an easy thing to do um but um i, I i'm quite confident that it's actually going to get better over time um so this is an interesting one html container now one of the things that if you start to build a a coke um a custom page like this one of the things you'll first notice is that it's initially doesn't look like a uh, kind of model of an app and one of the things that fluent talks about is elevation it's elevation is quite a key part of making this kind of modern look and feel to your um to your your application and if you can notice there's a little bit of sort of shading underneath this um to kind of bring it forwards and there's a there's a kind of little trick that you can do now initially you don't have the ability to add in the html control but <clears throat> you can copy and paste it at the moment from a um from a a canvas app and if we look at this what i've got here if we go to the um the html control here i've got an html control here and the uh the the text here i've just created some um a little bit of HTML here to create this border, this 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 um, this shading, and this this shading comes from the Fluent UI styles um, for elevation. So it it suddenly just 
makes makes your components just lift off the page a little and and that gives the impression that it's somewhat more native to model driven apps as soon as you have as soon as you have a a flat ui maybe just white with, with no, none of these these fluent uh, themes it it detracts from that um that overall model driven feel so if we go back into um one of the the standard records Sorry, just coughing there. Um, yeah, so just you know, you take a look at the way you let it, it gets laid out, and look at the um, the various different border colors and the spacing, and a lot and a little bit of that layout goes a long way when it comes to making it look like a uh, a model driven app. Um, so security. Um, th this is one of those things that really does. You do find that. Um, it's easy to forget security. I've done it. I've been there so many times. You think, hey, everything is great. And then suddenly at the end of it, you're like, oh, wait, wait, what about security? Well, um, the, the good news is, is that inside a custom page, we've got these data set info and record info functions. And so what that means is, like, if I come into our um, custom page here and we look at the app on start, what we what we're doing as well as we're setting our uh, theme here what we got is um actually an init function here what i'm doing is i'm setting some permissions here using this data source info uh function and to set a variable just to say okay i this user can create and can delete opportunities so i'm asking for create do i have the create permission on opportunities do I have the delete permission on opportunities? And then I can use that inside my command bar. Uh, if we look at that, our items for our command bar, we can see here we're just setting the visibility of the delete button based on the opportunity delete and the visibility of the, uh, the new based on the opportunity create. <clears throat> So it's it, if you consider this from the beginning, it's going to be a lot easier going forwards. Obviously, if you wanted to start editing individual records, you're going to have to do the very similar type type thing um, for using record info. So responsivity. <clears throat> so this is one of those things that model driven apps just works. You know, it's model driven apps are just beautiful in terms of re responsibility. Responsivity just, you know, this does things like it automatically hides your side navigation. Um, it automatically reflows everything. Lots of lots of quite complex stuff. Um, and the good thing is, is that actually natively we have, if we look at layout, we've got these horizontal container and vertical container um, controls inside custom pages. Now they they're actually now available in in Canvas apps as well, which is really good. Um, you may have done responsivity already using just sort of dynamic formulas, power effects formulas. So you basically say, OK, based on my screen width and I'm going to re <clears throat> change the, the, the positions of things. Well, you know, th those kind of things are suddenly solved entirely for you. So you can just build up these stack panels so you can say, OK, well, I've got a side panel here and I've got a vertical stack panel. And then inside that, I've got a, a horizontal stack panel. And inside that, I've got my my label. And inside that, I've got my my form header. And it just lay it lays it out automatically for you. And you can give it things like you can say whether or not you got you want. You can give it the gap width. You can say, well, if I want to ju justify it, you can say even say if I want to have overflow and wrapping, you know, so all of those things that you would normally have had to manually worry about using your uh, your custom your your canvas app just is done for you. And so lastly, um, <clears throat> localization. I, I did say that, um, yeah, security is the last thing to be thought about. Um, maybe accessibility, maybe localization. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes there's a lot of things that you can you can forget about. But if you do need to support localization, the great thing is, is that now we can actually add in 
ResX web resources. So this is model driven apps, you know, ResX web resources is a, a kind of like been around for, since the dawn of time, I think. And so this, I love the fact that we can now add these in to our um, to our model driven, our, our custom pages. <clears throat> and then we can just use this sort of web resource name dot key name, and then that will automatically pick up the the correct one based on the user's locale. So that's um, it's pretty, pretty awesome. So there are limitations, you know, this is a journey, OK, you know, so it's it's work in progress. So, for example, top tablet mobile it doesn't work entirely well on, on iOS yet, works on Android. Offline isn't there yet. Um, there is a I'll put a link at the end. Um, there is there's like a known issues link for in the docs that you can kind of go and refer to. And so I don't think ever we're ever really going to be done in this journey and convergence just because it's about about making this declarative uh, way of programming easier is actually a journey that we've been on since the beginning of software. I mean, it, it's it's right back in the day you had to kind of you, you know you toggle your relays and you you know and it was really primitive. But as time has gone back uh, gone by, we've raised that level of abstraction. We've got we've got more and more declarative and less and less and less imperative. And so it's just an evolution. You know, it's not like, oh, suddenly one day we go, OK, right, we've, we've done a convergence. You know, it's it's about constantly making it easier to make business applications, making it more, them more consistent, making them more productive, lowering the to total cost of ownership. So, you know, I, and I, I love the fact that we we are seeing all of this investment in model driven apps, model driven apps that we know and love and we just grown up with them since they were Dynamics CRM. So um, that brings me to the end. Um, we're, we're kind of a little bit over, but if you've got any questions, there's a whole load of uh, links there. There's my code as well for, for the, the survey, which so you can win your uh, your out your Amazon voucher. Um, and uh, yeah, please do follow me on Twitter and uh, subscribe to my channel on YouTube because I've got some exciting videos coming out very shortly on a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about here. Um, and there's a lot of uh, links there that maybe get on your way. So questions. Um, we have so questions, yeah, uh, Scott. I can sh share the questions we, with you if okay. you want. Yeah, yeah, uh, so just scrolling down, yeah. <laughs> Phil, Phil asked, uh, have you found a way to trigger a cloud flow from inside a custom page? Mm. So um, at the moment, um, Yes, it's coming um, because custom pages you can just add in. You will just be out be able to add in normal connectors. Um, but at the moment, that's not supported. Um, so, for example, um, you will just be able to you know do all the standard things you'd be able to do in PowerFX eventually. Um, but at the moment, you're just going to have to find a different alternative route. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question from Enrique. Apart from HTML containers, what else we can only use in custom pages by copying from a Canvas apps currently? Uh, okay. Because so I guess some components are not available in custom page by default, and you can try to get them from a basic Canvas apps, and just like you've shown during the presentation for HTML containers. Yeah. Uh, does well, it work with every uh, components from a Canvas apps? I guess it's a question. Yes, definitely. I mean, it, it does. It does work. I have not found one it doesn't work for. Um, but I would say that the uh, certainly classic controls that you could enable those, right? So there's a flag to enable those. So they're they're okay. I would say they're supported. Um, but do do be careful because. Theoretically, you know, kind of, they're not supported. You know, anything that you bring in that's not available, and if you if you go to the known issues and uh, on custom pages that, that, at the moment, they're not supported. Um, I, I use actually, you know, the the HTML control is is kind of like um, probably the the sim one of the simplest controls there is. Um, but if you didn't want to do go down an unsupported route for that, you could just create a, a code component that just outputs a very very simple bit of HTML. Um, and that bottom link there that using fluent code components uh, shows uh, you know how to build a fluent control and you can sort of bring in all the, all the kind of different styles you would get from a fluent um, 
uh, like elevation and all on all of those kind of things. Um, so I would be careful um, with that. It is a, there is there is a little bit conflicting in the docs because in the docs it talks about this is how you convert a Canvas app into a, into a custom page and it says copy and paste. But then also the docs say we, these are the only components that we support. And so you know it's it is a bit unclear I would say at the moment. But I haven't found any components that don't work. <laughs> Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, another question from Phil. Uh, is there any application insights integration with custom pages? So uh, can, can you enter a, a, an instrumentation key from application insights in a custom page just like you can do it with a, um, a Canvas app? Um, well, I've not seen, I've not actually tried it, but um, once you've enabled the app insights for model driven app, I've not tried it. Um, I would suspect that you would get, you would start to get some kind of instrumentation coming out in 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 that app in in that where you've enabled it for app insights on the model driven app. Um, but yeah, it's worth worthwhile giving it a go. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, One hundred percent things going on in custom pages will appear in the application insights in that case because it seems it. Uh, I think I heard from where that it's perhaps uh, not even the same session when you are in the custom page, uh, the uh, same well, session ID. So yeah, so the, the 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 but it's actually very now it's very integrated inside. Um, it's very integrated inside the way that model driven session works. And in fact, you know, there's there's only a degree of um, you know like date caching of data and stuff like that so it seems to me that i mean i, I again i don't know the, the 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 real details but it seems to be a a lot closer than you might think um it's not like when you embed a canvas app inside a model driven app which is a different session different authentication all that kind of stuff when you have a custom page inside a model driven app it's a lot closer um to the model driven apps than than you might think so uh, and also, given that the app insights that you would get from model driven apps is the same app insights that kind of or a subset that Microsoft gets, um, I would expect they would want to see who's using um, custom pages and things like that. So, you know, it was certainly not worthwhile giving it a go. Yeah, we we'll need to, to check <laughs> this part. Uh, another question from Jennifer uh, No issues with too many controls, warning. When you when using lots of nested stacks, I'm not sure I understand this question, so I would not be able to help you <laughs> to clarify. Lots of nested stacks, no issue with too many controls. Um, you, well, yes, there. As soon as you can, as soon as you nest stuff, and as soon as you have lots of controls, um, you can definitely get that warning. Um, obviously, complexity of your app is always going to affect your your rendering performance um, and it goes back to that sort of advice that i was talking about where try and keep your uh, your app as single purpose as possible um, which is why i tend not to try and have uh, it being you go into the custom page and you don't need to leave um, you know, because that's that's very tempting when you move. If you think about it as a canvas app, because that's that's the method, that's the mentality of a canvas app, right? You know, you open up the app, you just do your stuff, and you don't need. Whereas model driven app, it's more of a page within a model driven app. So if you think about it like that, suddenly the complexity of that custom page is inherently limited. Um, but yeah, certainly, definitely, you you, you do have to um, you do have to to be uh mindful of when you start to do complex nesting uh and i think for the last question in the chat uh, from michael uh i think we cover this part for dynamic for custom insights uh it seems perhaps it's covered inside the model driven app uh, application insights integration but we need to make some explorations around this topic and i don't think we have more questions in chat but i can have a last one for you uh, scott um how custom pages are handled in source code is it ms app files you can unpack or how? yes it is um so there's okay. yeah so if you if you have a solution and you you unpack it like you would do in a kind of a devops 
uh, ALM scenario, yeah, it comes up as an MS app, um, just got a, just a little bit with a bit, little bit of ad additional metadata around, you know, its position in the um, in the model driven form, um, in model driven navigation, etc. So you can okay, get so all the source system pages and will and appear in the source code on sales under the Canvas apps uh, folder and will be linked to the model driven app using the sitemap, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's right. Great. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much for, for this amazing presentation uh, and have a great day, uh, Scott. And for the, the rest of, of the participants, we will have a, a break of one hour and we'll come back in at 5 p.m. for for the second part of the of the event. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. <laughs>